Hello and welcome to PlayStation Racer. My name is Mitchell Morgan and today I have got something a little bit different for you today. I've got my first unboxing on the channel. I've acquired a TV stand from GT Omega. We're going to open the box, see how it's packaged, see how it comes together. And I guess that I ought to point out before we do that, that I am really tight for space in this room. Uh, I do a little image, but you'll note that the television normally sits on my desk and I have to get the PlayStation seat out or the play seat out, put it underneath my desk and it's just a real flap. So my wish is to get the TV stand against the wall and have a prime light rig which then hopefully I'll be able to upgrade and take a direct drive steering wheel when I can afford that. Big plans. Uh, the big question is whether this is going to fit in this room and it's going to work. Uh, desk is going to need to be moved and all sorts of bits and pieces. So the first stage is to get this box open, get it built and then see how this fits in the room and then see whether the rest works. I have my fingers crossed that it will. So let's get into it. Oh, it's a heavy old box. It looks well packaged. Uh, lots of salad tape on it. Going to use the old scissors to open it up. So if any youngsters are watching, if you are going to be using scissors, be very, very careful with them. They are sharp. Alternatively, get an adult to do this for you. Just be very careful how to open this because I don't know what is underneath. I don't know how well protected it is, so I don't want to scratch or mark anything. Now I can't apologise already if things are going slightly out of shot. Uh, that is basically because of a distinct lack of space in this room. It doubles up as my workroom and my racing room. Let's just see if we can get into this. I might need to move the cameras around to do some close-ups and bits and pieces like that. So, well, it looks pretty well packaged, I have to say. Uh, we've got the usual bubble wrap. Everything is well packaged in bubble wrap and all sorts. We've got um, so yeah, we've got a number of um, nuts and bolts, wrenches, some end plates, all very, very well wrapped up with sellotape. So it's going to need to be cut. Just going to put those in front of me on the floor. The obligatory instructions that will need to be read before we go too much further. And we need to check that we've got all of the parts in the box. Some more end plugs and a number of metal parts that are all wrapped up really really well in, in bubble wrap. So I'm just whoops, I'm just gonna take all of these out, just lay them out on the floor so I can get the box out of the way, and then we'll have a look at putting this stand together. All of these parts are really, really well wrapped up in, in bubble wrap. Every single individual item is nicely wrapped, all the metal parts. It's like Christmas. Even where you've got multiple parts that are the same, so these, these little items here, they're all actually rolled in the bubble wrap. So rather than putting these items together thus, and then putting the bubble wrap around them, they've actually really nicely packaged these where each individual item is rolled in bubble wrap to keep them separate. So each one of these looks in real, real pristine condition. 
unwrapped a lot of stuff over the years and uh, this stuff is really, really, really well packaged. Okay, slide this one out if we've got enough room. Just. That's one. Again, each of these three large components, they are all packaged individually within this piece of bubble wrap so it's not that they are all together and then the bubble wrap around them each one oh, get rid of this each one of the, each one of these parts have been individually wrapped in each piece of bubble wrap so not a mark on any of them so it all looks relatively straightforward. I'm just going to have a. I'll probably be pausing the video from time to time whilst I work through this. I'm just going to take it slowly. And we may well do some close ups as well. Okay, so. The first thing that seems to be needed is for this um, back plate to be put together and that appears to require some of the black bolts that are Allen key bolts. Let me just uh, make sure I've got the right Allen key. Yes, I do. So these are these little bolts like this. And all we need to do is um, line the uh, the plate here. Sorry for coming backwards and forwards to the camera. The plate here has flat one side, and if you can see in there, and recess that side. So these bolts go in the little recess, like that, with the plate on the back, thus, and then there'll be a little bolt, nut and a washer probably, or just a washer, and just a nut to go on the back. Uh, how many washers have we got? We don't have many washers So I'm just going to loose fit this with my fingers for the moment And we can obviously tighten this up afterwards When we know that we've got everything right Obviously if you take that approach then make sure that you do tighten things up at the end then on the opposite side to the part that's sticking out we need to mount these little arms again just making sure that we line these up with the right holes two bolts with two nuts making sure that you get the nuts around the right way so the, the flange part goes flat against the metal I will do a close up on that in a moment well, there are plenty of holes on the back here so I'm assuming that these are so that you can attach these arms in different ways to suit the television that you are using. Um, I haven't yet aligned those with my television, but we will do that in a few minutes.
So what we end up with is um, a, a configuration such as this with that bracket on the back and you can see those bolts just go through with the flat heads on there. All of those I was able to do by hand just tightening them just with hand, my hands, my fingers except for two which I needed to use the wrench and the allen key for otherwise they all went on pretty easily so that is that little section done and we'll put that to one side and come back to that a little bit later so now we need to look at the next section so these two shorter parts are the bits that go on the floor they are the base so I'm just going to put those to one side for the moment these three other parts are the uprights, so they're going to go that way, and then the crossbar that the TV mounts on. So I don't think it matters which way round these go, but what we will need to do is just lay one across the other. So I'm just going to use the two just to lay one across the other. That puts this flat rather than having this one out of the way and then it's not level. So it's going to keep these two edges flat. And it would seem that we need these little angle brackets that's these ones with these parts you've got if you can see that these two lugs here so if I just do that at an angle you can see they're sitting up these two and you've got them both sides Now those lugs sit in the groove there so it stops it from moving around. You can slide it but you can kind of actually move it sideways. However, because these parts fit angularly you're not going to be able to fit it this way. It's not going to sit on there. So what you have to do, so on one side you leave them attached and then on the other side what you do is you just put the wrench in you lever it up and you literally just snap them off so it's flush that then means that when you are offering it up to the metalwork it will then sit flush on the metalwork So now we can put one in there that's going to slide, we can then offer the other panel up which then will sit flush. Right, next thing to learn is that you have these little bolt parts that the bolts go into at the top which need to sit in the metalwork and you can either simply slide them in like that so if I just get this in the camera shot there's the end of the metalwork you simply line it up sorry my fingers are in a way slide it in to where you want it Whoop. let me just try and get a better angle quite tricky so you just slide it in like that at the end or you can do it from the top where you just 
what you have to do is, is there's like a little metal flange bit and you put the metal flange bit in first you then rotate it around push the part in so it's then in there and it's a bit difficult to show on the camera and then jiggle it around using the allen key so that the the um, end of the bolt part is showing now I'm preferring to actually put them in the end like that they seem to line up a lot better if you do it that way okay after some messing around um, I have found the easiest way to do part of this not all of this first of all make sure that you get the right size screws there's two types of screw and you need the shorter one of the two not the longer and what I do is with the in this instance with the cut off end with the two lugs missing I just offer up the screw so just through there like that I then add in the this little it's not quite a bolt but this slide bolt part just loosely fit that in and then when we've got the end here so I've already got one on here already assuming I've got this round the right way but it does spin so it's a little bit fiddly to do this on camera while I'm holding it it's easier to do it on the floor but I line it up squeeze up the little little luggy bits I then get the allen key and then just nip that up a little bit just so that it's loose but loose enough so that you can slide it up and down to whatever location you need and then just tie that off so I'm finding that's the easiest way if you've got the ability to slide them in here just gonna just loosen these up a little bit slide them down to where I need them which is pretty much here now just tighten that one up finger tight slide this one down doesn't quite butt up and just leave that finger tight just so that you can adjust those if you need to now where it gets a little bit more difficult is we obviously well, we can actually, if we slide this over as far as we can, and then we come up to the end where we've got these bracket things, we can once again do the same trick. Place the nut and the bolts in place. that up finger tight and we'll do the same on another one so that now looks like that if you can just about see that and then we can do the same trick in lining them up with the bottom part we need to loosen that off a little bit and loosen that off a little bit to get them lined up Tuck 
the little metal bits under and then that slides in and then we'll do the same on this one just loosen it off a little bit get it lined up tuck the little flangey bits in and then theoretically these should then slide down to whatever location that we want them in. So we do it like that. And you need to do two one side and two the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You want to tighten it up to the upright before you do the horizontal. There we go. And then that gives us, you can't actually see it, but that gives us the horizontal plane that the TV will go onto and the two uprights. But then we bring in the two feet, either the bottom parts that go on the floor. And this time we are using, I believe, these, these brackets, those ones. And we've got the same sort of setup where we're going to need to clamp. I'll just turn this around so you can see. We're going to need to clamp the uprights to the bases that way. So the first thing I'm going to do, as before, Right, using the longer of these two bolts, let me just come in. So it's the longer of those two bolts this time, because this part of the bracket is thicker there than the other one, the other brackets that we were using. We'll do exactly the same thing. So for all eight of these, I'm just going to set them up like that. And the last one. One bolt left over. Always worry when I get one bolt left over on something. Okay, so we are going to need to slide that in there. as before that's one we're going to have one that way we have one this way so I want two on each end and I need two on this side as well so one two So you want four on one of the legs and then same again on the other side. So now has my theory worked by prefixing those two? Because now We need to bring in the uprights into the middle.
Right, that part of my plan didn't work. So as you can see, I'm now putting these in the end of the uh, these uprights. Just trying to get them lined up as best as I can. The instructions do say to use the Allen key just to swing them around into place, but I am trying to get them lined up on the ends there as best as I can. I think that that might make it a little bit easier. Then we will carefully tip this over. And then using the Allen key, we'll just need to slide these up to where they need to be. Bring that one up slightly more. Okay, that's, that's pretty much there. Then what I'm going to do is to bring all of the others up to roughly the same place. And then we will attempt Screw these in. Just using the Allen key as needed. Whoops. actually have an allen key screwdriver which would make this a lot easier but I'm trying to use the, the tools that are provided in the uh, in the package okay, just get that lined up so it's at 90 degrees that was just slightly twisted there so the uh, bolt wasn't really lining up very well. This one I just need to just move into place. There we go. Okay, I'll just screw that up. Just tighten that one up as well. And then that is then one of the legs in position and I just need to repeat that process then on the other side. Push that down until it locates. So just to take you through that, what I tend to do is just drag the bolt up clear of the bracket, get the bracket in place, offer the bolt up and then you can just slide that down and so that the bolt lines up. And I found that to be the best way of doing that. This one is slightly in the wrong position. This is just reposition that. Just slide it down gently into position. And then we can just knit those up accordingly. There we go. And then these. And again, we can move 
these uprights backwards and forwards to accommodate the space within our room. So if I just grab the camera for a second, I can't actually zoom out far enough, but you'll see there that we've got our feet on the floor. Then we come up to the crossbar where the television will go. And then that comes all the way up the top. So the feet are just secured thus. And then on the back, the uprights are just secured with those brackets. So our next job to do is using the blanking plugs that we took off of these brackets is just literally to push those back into place on all eight of those little arms. Obviously you need to do this when you've got the this upright and everything in the location where you want it. So it's absolutely horizontal. I'd use a spirit level for that to make sure your TV is level. And then obviously offer that up to your racing rig so that you know how high you want this bar off of the ground. Also on each of the ends, we've got these other blanking plugs and they simply push fit onto each of the ends like so you're going to get a bit of a, a better push than that but that will then finish off the ends of these uprights and cross pieces quite nicely okay the next thing that we need to do is to take our television and you might need to move your stand um, I've actually got a way with leaving my stand on which is good and then you need to take your backing plate that we built earlier now, a correction to what I said earlier on. Offer your backing plate up to the television to make sure that the holes line up. Mine didn't line up, so I've had to do more of a, a horizontal affair to make those holes line up with my television. In the kit, I didn't realise we were going to get these, are some additional screws which fit quite nicely into my television. There are a number of screws which I believe are the ESA fittings or something like that for televisions. Hopefully, like me, yours will fit. And that will save you having to go out and locate some other screws. And for these I'm using a screw and a washer. Okay, that one doesn't line up perfectly so what I'm going to have to do I think if I just take these off again it's a little bit trial and error because obviously all televisions are different and then what I'm going to do is just to take off two of the bolts forgive me this is just out of screenshot at the moment but you'll see what I mean in just a moment okay so I've just taken off two of those bolts I'm just getting in camera um, which way that way I'm taking off two of the bolts that one there I can't find the camera that one there and that one there. We'll offer that up now to the television again. And hopefully this time we'll be able to line everything up and then secure it. Fine adjustment on that one. And same there. Okay, 
and we'll just gently secure that one and we'll gently secure that one and that one and finally that one just make sure that all of the other bolts are tightened Uh, and then that is our bracket located to the television so the next thing we need to do is just offer up our television we've got the bolts in they've been slid in from the rear as before sorry the the little nut assembly bit We just need to locate these thus, and we've got two on the top and two on the bottom. And once they're in the position where we want them, I'm going to have mine uh, as tight to the stand as I can get it. So with the bolts underneath that's pretty much there I think and we just tighten up those bolts and then we just have two more to do at the bottom right and then I'm just to finish off I'm going to go around and just make sure that all of the bolts are completely tightened Remember some of these we only have finger tight so we could adjust things as we needed. Obviously making sure that this bar here is horizontal. I'd use a spirit level for that if I was you. And then finally all we need to do is go around and fit our blanking plugs throughout the whole unit. And then all we need to do is put it back into position. And the other thing that I did, if I just move the camera over, for the TV mountings on the back, I added the washers as per the instructions. I didn't do that the first time, so I just added those in as well, just to finish it off. And then finally, we have a couple of photographs of the rig in place. So you can see the TV stand and then the play seat sitting underneath it with the TV mounted. Hope you enjoyed this video if you did please consider subscribing give it a thumbs up hit the bell for notifications of more like this coming very soon in the meantime thanks ever so much for watching and i'll see you again very soon bye bye